Jarno Salomo from Shape of Despair. And Natalie Koskinen from Shape of Despair. Hello, hello. Great. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Nice to meet you. Uh, likewise. So before we even get started with Shape of Despair, I'm curious what your thoughts are. Why do you think so much good metal comes out of such a small country as Finland? Mm. Well, it's an inordinate amount, I think. It's probably because of weather or something. A lot of darkness. <laughs> I don't know. Or, or maybe it's something about doing something with alcohol and Finnish <laughs> <laughs> are quite uh, Finnish people are quite heavy drinkers also but I'm just curious no, you, you yeah. make us sound like an alcoholic people no nah, <laughs> <laughs> that's not good <laughs> I was just telling him my partner is uh, from Finland she's in a band called Silentium she couldn't be here today but Rina has been doing this with me for the last couple of years I actually know know Rina. Oh, really? Very well. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, <laughs> she's been my partner here for the last couple of years, and today she had something come up. So, okay, that's too bad. Too bad. So anyway, let's talk about Shape of Despair then. So, for those not familiar with uh with the band, can you give us the two sentence boardroom pitch? Hmm. Well. We play very slow metal, doom metal. Um, some people say we play funeral doom metal, but then again, um, I think categorizing us to simply just for funeral doom metal is maybe not right. That might be too narrow. But close to that, close to that. Yeah, I mean, I, I could see the doom, but I think that's probably too narrow to be funeral doom, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm at the same level, yeah. So, new record, Return to the Void, was released, uh, what, a, I guess about a month ago? A little over a month ago? Now yeah. that it's out, what's been the response to it, and how do you feel about it? Are you satisfied with the way it turned out? Um, well, honestly, I'm, I'm more than satisfied myself. Um, what I'm expecting myself when we got this record into our own hands is literally that we have finished the work as, just as how we wished everything would go. And this time it was even even more better result because um, we were producing and engineering this album from beginning till the end, except mastering, of course. But then again, uh, this process, I think it was much more better than on previous albums. Even we were very much along with those albums as well, but this is a much more bigger step forwards from us. Did you do all of that yourself because of the situation we were all living in, or was that something you were going to do anyway? That was that was about to do anyway, but then again, mixing the album was a bit more impulsive thing from our drummer Samu. Mm, but in a way, it was very damn good, fine <laughs> impulse. What was it like writing during, I mean, because I'm assuming this was written during the pandemic and through all the global shit that we all dealt with. So what was it like writing this record during the pandemic and how much of that made its way into it? Especially because I think doom metal or this slower metal lends itself to more expression like that anyway, right? Mm, yeah. But then again, I started this before pandemia even started. So it, actually, pandemic didn't affect us in, in any way in, in songwriting or uh, any, any, anywise. So I think it just gave, me, gave us uh, much more freer hands to um, start focusing on recording and rehearsing the album itself. So it was much more uh, easier in a way. So you don't have to focus on rehearsing on some certain live shows, for example. Were you guys able to get into the same room and write, or is that not how you do things? Are you taking advantage of technology? Um, well, yeah, that's just usually me. I'm I'm liking to make those demos by myself and uh, bring and all the stuff as early as possible for for other members. Yeah, but then again, we have, 
we have lots of different processes after that. For example, Natalie and Henry is arranging vocals, and that takes some time from from themselves as well. And honestly, Henry and Natalie would be so perfect to tell something about the vocal arrangements on this one. Okay. Well, you may not. <laughs> We did it like separately with uh, Henry, actually. He, for some um, songs, he made some, uh, brought up some ideas and then I, I tried to improvise to complete the song. And for some songs, I just, you know, did it by myself. So, right. yeah. Do you usually find... it goes like that. Is that how the, that's a normal process anyway? Yeah, actually, yes. Yeah. That's interesting. I know a lot of bands do things different ways, especially now that, you know, technology is so different in the way we've lived. But I still think that uh, that the interaction between people and playing off each other adds something to the music that you don't get in a purely let me send you this file world. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. And, you know, and I, guess, again. I mean, oh, we uh, for us, it's like we knew each other, each other for very many years, you know, it's um, this is the way it's, it's, it's pretty natural for us, really, to do this. We know each other very, very well. We know what we want, how we want uh, the music will sound. And so it just works for us. That's great. At least. Is there yeah. something you want your fans to take away from or the listener to take away from after listening to any of your albums, but in specific, uh, Return to the Void? Is there like a takeaway message? Not from my side. I'm, well, my passion is making some music and I don't usually uh, guide people or tell people to <laughs> have any kind of listening habits, so to say, for, from our music. I think everyone has their own kind of habits to listen whatever mm -hmm. music they listen, whether it be on the background or playing as loud as possible from beginning to the end. And I think that's the correct way for myself, at least, to play as loud as possible and concentrate on it. Because I personally, for me, this is not the background music. Right. Do you find it that you're writing songs like for the song's sake or are you writing songs how they're going to sound live, like how powerful they're going to be live or how loud they're going to be live or are you writing a song just a song yeah just like that yeah and Even then you not no images about live shows because it won't even make sense because we are making a handful of shows per year maybe right so with that being said then do you find it difficult translating any of your stuff into the live setting because in the studio you can do a whole bunch of things right that you can't do live yeah and um, that's one thing we've um, came across when we started first thinking about this live show in 2012 mm -hmm. and of course the main feature in our music is uh, having lots of keyboards and that was a big challenge to think about how how this will be brought into live situation because because of many layers of keyboards. But then again, it's also interesting um, how to make it sound at least a bit more different, maybe in a live situation. And I, and I think that maybe over all these years, we are maybe now getting to think of a bit more differently in that wise. Do you find it difficult not writing the same record. I mean, this is record number five or six, right? Five, yeah. Five. Do you find it difficult not writing like the same record that you just wrote the previous one or constantly reinventing yourself? Or is that not mm -hmm. an No, this is, yeah. I think every album is a bit different. Um, it has a bit different mood, every album of, from each other. And of course, we are thinking about many years of differences between the albums itself so right. it's not like um how do you say multiple products per per year or two years um you are changing your mind in some some use maybe maybe your music chain uh, music uh 
uh, likings are about to change a bit also and you're getting inspiration from different different sources and i think that's maybe the biggest key on on making albums and music's music uh is to have a bit more wider maybe uh, approach to what you're making and i'm sure the same goes as well on on uh, vocalist as well they're having a different kind of moods also how they listen music and of course all the years are changing them as well okay and yeah we are not the same band uh, as we used to be i mean uh, years are going but uh going and uh, we are older <laughs> mm -hmm. but um no we are we not have... <laughs> yeah i'm still planting <laughs> um yeah and we work with many different bands and you know we we got uh, so many different experience for different bands so it of course it affects you know on the music we do now these years so uh the way i see it we we got we are much better so that yeah you see the progression as you go yeah. Along. sure yeah and uh, this is how it should be I agree. And you said, so, I know yeah. you mentioned that you said we're getting older. Did you ever imagine you'd still be doing this? Uh, it's what's like 20 years later since the first record or more? Hopefully. Maybe. Hopefully. Because, <laughs> I mean, the, you know, bands come and go. It's pretty significant to still make relevant records 23 years later, I guess. Is that when Shades came out? Yeah. I'm going to make a new live shows with, with uh, wheelchairs, you know. <laughs> but I also imagine that, I know you said you only play a few shows a year, but I imagine that those shows are multi-generational, right? Because you've got people bringing their kids to the shows, which is something you probably have not seen. <laughs> that's, that's true, and that makes us sound even more older. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool because it's a built-in a built-in fan base right because i know when i go to shows now i can't wait to take my son to see you know whatever i'm going to see and he kind of turn on the yeah. next generation yeah that's true that's, all, yeah, that's nice yeah. that's nice actually yeah and i have to say uh in my opinion uh, shape of despair is uh one of the dif difficult band to play live because um some some people must think that um or might think that uh, this is very slow music. It's very easy to play. It's not true. It's far from it. It's uh, very, very, very difficult to be on stage and play this kind of music. I think um, there's that old saying that like less is more, but I think it's definitely probably more difficult when it's not as heavy and it's i mean not as fast and is sped up and it's probably more difficult yeah. to fill those voids yeah it is it is for sure i mean do you really need to concentrate in, on on the music yeah and you're never sure what kind of sounds it, like it, it will be like on on the different in the different places you know right so mm -hmm. it's not easy so what um, do you have oh sorry go ahead no, no, no. I was just trying to say that, uh, of course, when we are thinking about this music and uh, it's not that kind of uh, um, party music, so to say. And right. think about live shows itself. It's kind of uh, also a bit challenged to get, well, try to get people into that kind of mood that we are representing our music. And it's also a bit, bit of a challenge also especially if you are talking about festival cases. Right, everybody wanting to mosh and run around and then you guys are up there with almost an anti-mosh stuff, right? It's it's a lot different vibe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. But still, I mean, it's kind of where it all started, right? I mean, Sabbath was heavy and slow back in the late 60s as well. True, yeah, true. Yeah. And there's room for all of that for sure. Yeah. What, what do you guys have planned? I know you said you do six shows a year. Are you doing any of the summer festivals or anything cool coming up? Yeah, we have already two festivals confirmed for this year. Uh, next, first one is a Tuska festival here in Finland. 
um, in July. And next one will be uh, at Germany, uh, Partizan. Oh, in nice. August. Yeah, well, What's that's it? so far the only yeah. confirmed shows because of the pandemic. What's it going to feel like to finally get back out on stage after? I mean, I assume you haven't played in a while because of this nonsense, right? Yeah, it's been a while. I think it's more than two years. Yeah. Bit shape, I mean. Yeah, yeah. What's it going to be like getting back out there? Any kind of nerves or any kind of uh, reservations or? I, in a way, I'm excited to go back to stage. Even I'm never that comfortable playing live, but anyhow, I think it's it's going to be a very nice experience again. I think yeah, the uh, yeah, I think the yeah. energy is going to be crazy, right? Because people like me are dying to see shows, so the energy exchange is probably even if it's slower music like yours, it's still going to be the energy exchange is going to be off the chain. Yeah, yeah, I'm really expecting that. At least it's going to be for the band itself. Yeah, but I imagine people in the audience too, because there's a million people who haven't been to shows yet and are just now starting to get out. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Live music, there's nothing like it. And when you're used to it and it gets taken away, it's been built yeah. up now. They're ready. Yeah, well, I had similar experience. I was, uh, in last month, I was seeing uh, one concert actually uh, in North Macedonia. And I think I haven't seen any proper show yeah, in, in these two years. And it's been so, so long time. And, Honestly, it felt very good. Yeah, it felt great, right? The first notes hit you and you're like, whoa, yeah, yeah. I missed it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing that you you get so used to something and you do it all the time and then it gets taken away how much you could really, really miss it. Yeah, that's true. So what's next for you guys then? Are you going to release more singles or are you just going to stay with what you've got or what do you have going forward? Um. We haven't even talked about that yet, but we have some couple of songs which we are about to finish. And I think there might be some kind of a small release, maybe, but not sure yet. We still have to think about those and finish all the songs first. And who knows? We are not in a hurry, as you yeah. probably noticed. <laughs> That's great. I mean, if it works for you and you can take your time, then I think the outcome probably is is better for it right because you're not rushing to meet some yeah exactly in my, opinion, in my opi opinion you need to um, like uh, you you cannot produce anything good if you're doing like uh, new albums like two albums per one year right exactly. to me it sounds like impossible <laughs> i mean but it's that, like ha eight, that eight, has eight, been eight, the music one. yeah but that has been the the model right everybody's been for years everybody's been doing release a record, tour for two years, release another yeah. record. I mean, that's the model. So it's nice that you're able to step outside of that and do it your way. Mm, I agree. But that runs up against my questions. Did I miss anything you wanted to cover? Not right now. If, uh, if fans want to find you, Shape of Despair, everywhere online? Everywhere. We don't have proper... All, um or website you can find us from facebook and instagram and twitter but um yeah those are the main channels and i think that works very well and of course if you need to if you are interested in buying some merchandise from us uh you can head to our own official bandcamp page of course season of mist handles also bandcamp page and their own website so yeah right. please go ahead and check it out yes please go buy merch that uh, keeps everybody alive no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. <laughs> did, I miss, did I miss anything or we're good? We are good. And thanks a lot for this interview. Hey, Noel, Thank no you. problem. Be Thank well, my friends. Take yeah. care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.